let's start with the beginning then. So can you tell us a bit about how, when you started rowing? Yeah, it was, um, it always used to be in interviews not that long ago, but now it is quite a long time ago. Uh, so it was in September 2001. Uh, I was at the University of the West of England. It was my second academic year uh, when I was studying engineering. And um, I think I, I just wanted to try something new, you know, do something different. I'd never had the opportunity to row before. And um, with my background in the Navy, I've always been drawn to water and uh, and sports that require a lot of teamwork and determination and those kind of things. And um, it was fortuitous, really. Uh, in the Navy, I'd spent a little bit of time doing fitness stuff on a rowing machine and I'd, I'd uh, surprised myself how good I was there. And um, at the time, in the Navy, people asked me, uh, have you tried rowing? Maybe you should. So when this opportunity came up, I was at a freshers' fair in my second year and some big guys came over and said, traditional, I think, how all big guys get into rowing. You're a big guy. Uh, do you fancy coming and trying? And I just said yes. And I remember my first session like it was yesterday. And uh, I remember my coach, Tim, uh, talking through um, this is a seat, a sax board, a rigger, a pin, a gate, a swivel, uh, runners, don't stand there, do stand there. Uh, hold this end, put that end in the water, and um, uh, yeah, it's it's um, just fantastic to have started at, at uh, exactly when I did. I was um, very lucky. Cool. So you did a couple of years at UE, and you mentioned that you went through a couple of Henley Royals, and then you got selected for GB. How did that selection go? What was the process, and how did you get spotted, as it were? Oh. Um, well, I was very young, still very wet behind the ears, a bit of a greenhorn. Um, how did it start? I think when I was at UWE, um I had a, my coach change. So Tim was a student coach that looked after me. And then very quickly we got uh, Fred Smallbone to come and coach us. So Fred's a Henley steward uh, and a whole host of other things. He's um, an old boy in the sport. He's an Olympic silver medalist. He's, uh, he stroked the national eight and um, just an amazing bloke. And suddenly just by luck I managed to find myself under his wing and um, he kind of looked after me. I was a big strong guy and I had all the potential and um, he was the guy that gave me a steer and all the decision making and all the the, the directions were under his watchful eye. So um, uh, I think the first thing he suggested that I do was have a look at uh, Oxford as an option as a stepping stone because I was still technically very rusty but big and strong so um, uh, Oxford was a, a logical step and um, the first few things I did uh, was I remember there weren't such big guys for me to race with at trials uh, at UWE so Fred sent me to um, uh, Richard Spratley at, at Brooks to see if I could um, uh, just do a training camp with some of their guys so I remember going to Wimbleball Lake, um, which the Brooks guys know very well. And I, I was raced after raced after race, just seat raced four minutes, turn, four minutes, turn, four minutes. And it's my first block of proper hardcore racing, but won myself a position in the top boat that they sent to the under 23 training process. So uh, I was really proud of that. And then under 23 trial, suddenly this Brooks four was competing with UL and lots of other universities and clubs. and. I came out well there and eventually worked my way to the top of that bit and got selected into the under 23s and um, uh, it helped. I had a big ergo, uh, which I demonstrated at, when I was young at um, the National Rowing, Indoor Rowing Champs uh, up in Birmingham and crikey, I really am talking now. These are, these are, <laughs> no, these are great memories. Cool. For, great, it's, uh, uh, it's great memories for me. Um, yeah. So yeah, after the combination of uh, indoor rowing champs, a bit with um, Brooks at Wimble Ball, uh, and getting into the under twenty three boats. Um, that How was that was where it all started. You got the boat? Oh, uh, You're under twenty three, obviously. But yeah, so when I started in September two thousand and one, uh, I was just twenty. Just twenty. Um, and then yeah, I must have been twenty two. So my my first stab at under 23s was my last available year for under 23s. Right. So I um, raced that summer in Belgrade, actually, um, in Belgrade in 2003. Uh, and then immediately after that, I'd already graduated from UWE. So then I um, came back a little bit of fitness stuff and then went straight into the Oxford program after that. 
Cool. So, you know, you've been in GB Squad for a while. Mm. Um, how's it changed whilst you've been there? Oh, it's um, it's changed a lot, and it's changed not very much. You know, it's um, there's a there's a great recipe there for success, and I think that came from back in the late 80s and early 90s, I'd say especially the early 90s when uh, the lottery funding came on board. Suddenly, I think the the work that Steve Redgrave and Matthew Pinson did in showing the team that we can be of a winning standard was critical. And then the money that came in from the National Lottery suddenly started to bring everybody up to their kind of standard. So, um, I, I don't need to tell you this, but in Atlanta, Great Britain, the Team GB as a whole won one Olympic gold medal, and it was in rowing, and it was Steve and Matt in the pair. And um, if you look back, was it 19 golds from from London? That so that number has just grown and grown and grown, and and that's been um, that that's been lottery funding. So to come back to your question, how has it changed since I've been there? Well, uh, my first senior training camp with the team was. Silvretta in the summer of two, 2004, which is the very, very last work camp before the Olympic Games. So I came in still very new, sort of bigger and stronger, and I had a year of Oxford behind me, and um, Jürgen loved me because I, I was really enthusiastic about training, and no job was too big, and no mileage was too high, and, um, and it was just incredible for me because I'd only been rowing for two years, and suddenly I was lifting weights with Steve, Reg, um, Steve Redgrave, uh, James Cracknell and Matthew Pinson. And, uh, and, and the rest of the boys, you know, the real big dogs of British rowing. And, um, and I was there. So I remember getting the circular through this little piece of paper with all the people that are going to Silvretta 2004 and my name's on there. I, I just couldn't believe it. And uh, that was an eye opener for me. Uh, and as it happens, I, I loved the training camp. I loved the altitude training. And to this day, I've done I don't know how many, maybe 10 Silveretta camps, and it's still my favorite camp that I go to. And um, probably because it was my first, and um, probably because of the, uh, the inspiration I, I got from my first trip up there. So all those guys went off to the Olympics. I didn't, of course. I was very low ranked, and, um, uh, and I had to watch the Olympics from home. But that was very real realistic for where I was in the team. Uh, so I've got no regrets there. And yeah, well, it was um, in a very small way. I, I mean, I was just there. I didn't have anything to do with it, but um, I was starting to feed off it. And uh, so I was lucky in a sense to get that Olympic feeling early on. And um, the way it's changed, you know, the people change. Uh, I'd say the, the depth of talent across the team is much, much stronger now. And I would say especially so in the women's squads, lightweight squads, uh, that's so much deeper and stronger than it was back in 2004. So where in 1992, it was pretty much Matthew Pinson and Steve Redgrave, that has just expanded and expanded and expanded through the heavyweight men, through the heavyweight women, and now uh, there's very, very little weakness in the team at all. And um, we're attracting more and more people, you know, talent ID comes in. Um, so all of these different schemes, world class start and those things where we, we go around schools, uh, have a look at athletes and, you know, literally get the tape measure out and you know, two meter arm span, two meters high. Are you trainable? Will you be enthusiastic? Come down, jump in a boat. They do and they're brilliant. And we're starting to get those guys through now. And um, the product of those initiatives has made the team I'd say outstanding. So now I'm, I'm in, in this Olympiad, in the Rio Olympiad, we're only halfway through. It's not, at the moment, in its current state, it's not as good as the finished article from the London Olympiad, mm. but it's got more potential. Absolutely, definitely more potential. So I'd say like for like uh, in the, our Carapiro year, so 2010 leading up to two years away from the Olympics, what we've got now is better than what we had then.